Hi, and welcome to the week four of the playoffs edition of The Grid. I'm Mike Foreman. I'm joined by, to my immediate right here, Tyler Tyree, and my far right there, Ray Castillo. Uh, Ray, we're happy to have. He's recovering from a little bout with that, that gunk that's going around and got me earlier. But uh, we're all here tonight. We're going to talk about the playoffs coming up this week um, and what happened last week. Uh, we lost some teams again last week. Uh, the herd has been thin quite a bit. But uh, first, let's uh, talk a little bit about last week. And I, I guess we ought to start with that that crazy Refurio Shiner game. Just just an unbelievable finish to that game. Um, two very good teams playing at a very high level and just an incredible finish. I mean, Shiner led by 13 points with 3.04 left in the fourth quarter. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, it looked like the game was over. Well, lo and behold, Shiner fumbles, Refurio scores. They go for two to take the lead with uh, 27 seconds left, and they miss it. So then again, you're thinking, well, it's over. Well, they kick an onside kick, and they get it. And then uh, two completions later, they find themselves on the uh, Shiner 18-yard line. They rush the field goal unit on, and um, Jordy uh, Martinez, who uh, hadn't kicked an extra point in eight weeks, he's been kicking off, but he hadn't kicked an extra point in eight weeks, come in and just drills the field goal with five seconds left, and uh, Refurio wins and moves on. Really just an incredible game the other night. Uh, a heartbreaker for Shiner because, I mean, really, if you look at it for about 45 minutes of that game, Shiner had done everything right. And then, boom, in the last three minutes, I mean, uh, you know, everything goes wrong for Shiner. But you have to give Refurio credit. I mean, heck, they Refurio scores 31 points in the fourth quarter. That's incredible. And a great performance by Austin Ochoa. He had over 500 yards, I think, total. Or maybe not. It was actually, I guess, over three. No, it was close to 500 yards that he had passing and rushing. And just, you know, in that game, there's close to 1,000 yards of offense. And, of course, uh, Donye Taylor from Shiner was was unbelievable in that game. Uh, so, But that wasn't the only game. Um, Ray, you, you covered uh, Industrial. Uh, mm -hmm. They lost a tough one to Columbus, who will play. We might as well talk about this week, too. They'll yeah. play a rematch with Howitzville. Yes, uh, yeah, that was a tough game. You know, how Industrial, uh, not used to losing. They were currently on a 10-game winning streak, and to lose like that, they even had to, they even fell short for the first time in a while, and they were having to play catch-up through that entire game. And it was it was tough, uh, just a tough matchup for them. And, you know, they, they look now looking to uh, the next round, and Hallisville, what could have been a rematch between those two teams that met, that played earlier in the season. Now it's going to be Hallisville, that's the team that's alive, and... Uh, but yeah, just a tough, tough game for Industrial. Uh, you know, of course, Coach Dixon, Coach Dixon felt like uh, you know they could have won that game, and uh, you know they could have. Uh, they led at halftime, and you know, but uh, Columbus give them credit. Their running game was on point, and uh, you know they made plays when they had to. And now it's Hallisfield that's going to get their second chance at Columbus uh, Friday uh, in Katy, and you know Hallisfield won that first meeting against the Cardinals, and mm -hmm. it was a close game, yeah. twenty eight twenty six, and. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Tommy Pensick said, you know, they're going to have to play even better because it's been a while since then, and obviously Columbus has made adjustments, and Hallettsville, uh, you know, will have to as well. Well, you know, one thing we should bring up, too, about Industrial and Hallettsville that's interesting, um, we just, of course, got the numbers from the UIL just, uh, I believe, just the other day, and uh, Industrial and Hallettsville came very close to dropping to Division Two. In fact, if they had two less students they turn in they would be division two so for what they've accomplished with their numbers is pretty incredible because in football numbers matter i mean because you have more bodies out there obviously your depth is better and that helps throughout the season but so what they've accomplished with their numbers is very impressive on both teams so um and uh tyler you saw you saw what i guess people might consider a bit of an upset uh the Ganado Indians coming through, uh, defeating Poth. Mm -hmm. uh, second straight week for them, actually, defeating an undefeated team. Uh, and 
it was they came out strong, scored on their first mm-hmm. drive, but both kind of took took control from there, and they weren't able to score in the first half. But they became really close a number of times, and then they came out in the second half and scored fourteen straight points to take the lead. And you were thinking that yeah. you know that might spell doom for Ganado, especially with the freshman quarterback at the helm. But Ganado came back, reeled off twenty one straight points, and mm. they. You know, it, they never looked back. The defense was strong throughout the fourth quarter. I think the freshman quarterback ended up with Kyle Burris Guerrero. He ended up with 300 yards of total offense, and he, you know, kind of led them down the stretch even. Yeah, well, obviously uh, Brent Bennett's done a tremendous job there, and we should mention, too, that they're going to be dropping the 2A mm-hmm. next mm-hmm. year, which is where they were for a couple of years, and then they went back up. They're always real close to that line. But, uh, boy, I mean, uh, I guess we've said this before, but he was uh, Lupe Flores' offensive coordinator at Bay City. And when Lupe left, uh, Brent went over to Ganado, and, boy, he's just really turned that program around. I mean, they've had success in the past, but it's been a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, now he's got them going, but uh, we might as well go ahead and talk about it. He's got a great challenge this week as they face... Uh, undefeated East Bernard, who is the defending regional champion mm-hmm. as well as the district champion. Yeah, uh, district champion this year. Uh, another undefeated team. This will be the third straight week. Well, that Ganado's up actually, both had one loss. Did they? Oh, they you're right. They Randolph. had one. Yeah, yeah, they lost their first in their yeah. first game. You're right. Yeah, but um, uh, still a great yeah. challenge. Mm-hmm. I mean. um, and then, but yeah, East Bernard won the first matchup, I think, 27-14. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, I was talking to Bennett earlier this week, and he thought they didn't do well enough, both on special teams and offensively in that game. But that it's a young team that Ganado has, and he, mm-hmm. and they've grown tremendously since then, according to Bennett. And he thinks that they have a real shot against him this week. Yeah, I just wonder what his feelings is. Does he feel like they they know how to at least contain that slot team? They feel like you know, seeing that one yeah. time around, they mm-hmm. know what to expect this time, and you know they've been drilling that into the heads of the kids all week of how to defend that slot T and, you know, what to expect with different motions and things like that. All right, as we uh, shift a little bit towards this week's games, we might as well start with Thursday, which uh, we have Refurio playing Holland, a uh, matchup of undefeated teams again here. Uh, Holland uh, hangs its hat on defense, uh, creates turnovers. It uses what's called the 10-1 defense. It was uh, created by G.A. Moore up in Salina. You might remember Salina won about, I think, six or seven titles, and that's basically what it used. What it, the, the philosophy is it's a pressure defense. It, it's man-to-man, right up in your face. The 10-1 signifying they have, like, one deep safety. So on the flip side of that, though, if Refurio can execute and exploit it, it is vulnerable to big plays because obviously if you put that much pressure on, you're leaving yourself, you know, open there if somebody gets loose. And I think that's what Refurio is hoping that they can exploit that. And that'll be the key. And of course the other key for Refurio is coming off such an emotional win like that on a short week. Mm-hmm. That's tough. I mean, last year it caught up to them. They uh and, and, I mean, to be fair, Mason was the state champion, and Mason had an excellent team and, and beat him up front on both sides of the ball. But Refugio did not play his best game in that game. And, uh, of course, they lost. Uh, Ochoa sprained his ankle. He was able to play, but he wasn't effective as a runner, mm-hmm. which is a big part of their game. So, uh, you know, I, I think uh, Coach Herring, Jason Herring, who we should mention, I guess, was the – Dave Campbell's Texas Football 2A Coach of the Week this week. I know he's drilled that in their heads this week, that, hey, you got to be focused on Holland, Shiners, you know, put that in the rearview mirror, and let's, uh, let's move forward because uh, that's what they're going to have to do this week. And then, uh, of course, we have some games on Friday. Uh, Ray, you mentioned it earlier, the uh, Hallettsville-Columbus uh, rematch. Uh, the Brahmas, um, you know, Columbus, you said is a better team, but I, I got to think Hallettsville's a better team right now, too. Yeah, both of those teams are uh, playing just so well, uh, especially Hallettsville. Uh, you look at, and we talked about it earlier, the numbers. Um, what Hallettsville's been able to do with just 21 players right now on the varsity roster is just uh, it's just phenomenal. And uh, 
you know, you look at coming over from last year, not even making the playoffs, and none of the players knew what to expect this year. And uh, for them to be here in the quarterfinals is, is pretty impressive. And it's the first uh, quarterfinal appearance for them since 2016. And, uh, you know, a trip to the semifinal, it's been a while for Hallettsville. Uh, 1976, to be exact, since the last time they've, you know, reached that far. But I know they're focused on uh, Columbus now before they even think about that. But, but yeah, it's a rematch of week four, um, Hallettsville came away with a close game there, 28-26, and both teams uh, have improved so much since then. And Coach Pensick, like I said earlier, he wants them to be ready because he knows it's not going to be the same Columbus team. And Hallisville feels like they're not the same Hallisville team either. Uh, just the progression of uh, Jonathan Brooks throughout the season, just he's played so well, especially in the playoffs, has 11 touchdowns. And Lane Linhart is just uh, maturing as well in his senior year. So these players are, are going to be ready, and uh, they've shown that so far in the playoffs. Right, and I think the big thing there is Hallettsville, you know, that win over Columbus, I think that kind of woke people up to Hallettsville. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, after coming off last year where they didn't make the playoffs um, and then coming into district, that was a huge win for Hallettsville because mm -hmm. it showed, you know, what kind of team it had. And then, of course, uh, the Brahmas proved it during district, you know, when they finished in that three-way tie. So that was a big eye-opener for them. Uh, I guess, too, um, it's interesting, though, that uh, that they would go to Katy. I, I kind of yeah. figured, you know, they, they play in El Campo or somewhere. But yeah. that'll be fun. I mean, that's a tremendous stadium. Uh, that's where uh, Quarrel played Silsby last year in the semifinals. Really nice stadium. It's almost like you're indoors, really, it seems like. But it's, uh, it's a great venue. I, I'm sure the kids will like it. And uh, a great chance for Hallettsville, you know, to get in the semifinals. And if they do, there's a chance they could see the defending state champion, Grandview, because Grandview <laughs> beat uh, Cameron Yo last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, they look every bit as tough as they, as they were last year. And let's turn to, to Ganado right now. We did talk a little bit about East Bernard. Uh, they're also doing some traveling, aren't they, going over to Alvin? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. They'll be playing uh, at Freedom Field in Alvin on Friday. And, okay. um, and it's, yeah, it's a huge stadium, and I'm sure all the kids are really excited yeah. about it. Yeah, and I guess, uh, Coach Bennett, I, I mean, uh, you alluded to this uh, last week, though, but this is something that Ganado has been mm -hmm. kind of looking oh, forward to, right? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the kids, they, I didn't even have to ask them the question. Yeah. They, they all brought it up. They wanted East Bernard. They've mm -hmm. been looking forward to this chance since they've lost that game. And, uh, you know, it's been a driving factor in, you know, wanting to advance is having a second chance at this team and, you know, ending their undefeated season. Right. And the other game we have Friday night, we have the uh, Fall City Beavers playing the Bremont Tigers, and that'll be in Pflugerville. Uh, Fall City, of course, uh, ever since it lost to Poth in the second week has come on, just been annihilating people in the playoffs. I mean, they jumped on people right away. But uh, I spoke to Coach Hart, and uh, he doesn't feel like that's going to be the case with Bremont. Bremont and Fall City probably in Division Two have as much tradition as anybody. Um, so this will be a game between two teams who are used to being in this situation. Um, and of course, Fall City, uh, Brady Lissy has just had an incredible year. Uh, he's played almost every position for them, every skill position you can imagine. Does a lot of things, and then the emergence of the the uh, freshman quarterback, or I mean the sophomore quarterback, excuse me, has helped them a lot too. Jackson has come on, Jackson Pipes, and uh, come on, and that allowed Brady to move back to running back, which gave him another threat. Um, Fall City will be ready, uh, but Vermont's a very good team, and uh, whoever moves on is likely to see Mart. And, you know, Fall City lost to Mart last year in the semis, but uh, I'm sure... They're hoping for another crack at them, but they first they'll have to get by Bremont. And then let's move on to Saturday. We have a couple of local teams uh, who are used to playing either in China or Howitzville, <laughs> but they're going to go up to uh, Hewitt Midway and to meet for, for a TAPS Division Four state title, uh, Shiner St. Paul and Howitzville Sacred Heart. Uh, St. Paul won the game between the two teams. I think it was... It was by seven points, so it wasn't a blowout by any you know by any stretch of the imagination. Um, 
you know, uh, St. Paul is, uh, they are, you know, defending state champs, and uh, you expect them to be there. Sacred Heart, though, has really come on in the uh, latter part of the season. Uh, their new coach, Manny Freeland, who, uh, by the way, played uh, quarterback at Edna. I don't know if people remember that, but uh, uh, Manny's got them playing really well. I mean, they, they just smacked an undefeated uh, Munster Sacred Heart team in the semi semifinals. So uh, this could, will be, it's always interesting when these two teams get together. Yeah, it's just a good rivalry, and uh, it's pretty neat that they, you know, change the uh, districts there that they can meet in the state final. Yeah. Uh, so that'll be fun for the, you know, both of the communities, and like you mentioned, uh, St. Paul being the defending, you know, state champions, and Coach Walksmith, you know, he's done such a good job, and right. you know that that does help a lot with these players. But yeah, it's, it should be a good one to see these two go at it. Obviously, they're familiar with each other, and should be fun. Yeah, big rivalry. I mean, you don't get state finals are big enough, but you usually don't get rivalry games in the state mm -hmm. final, which, and you've got that right here. So that'll be really interesting. And um, you can uh, stay up to date with all the scores beginning with Thursday night, then Friday and Saturday we'll have them here for you. You can follow us on Twitter. You can watch Avo Sports, and of course you can read about it in the paper or in the e edition. We have it all for you. And we're hoping, we're hoping that there'll be some teams to talk about next week. That's not a guarantee at this time of year, but, you know, here we are December, and uh, we've got uh, quite, you know, what, five teams, or actually, mm -hmm. I guess, six teams playing uh, December football. So uh, that's impressive, and, um, you know, we'll see hopefully that somebody can stay alive for next week, and we'll be back with another edition of The Grid.